great debate, everyone, where I wanted to talk a bit this week about harem anime and why it exists and why it's kind of controversial. And if you're interested in it or want to kind of dig deeper into it, some shows you might want to check out. So first off, let's define our terms. And this is actually one of the funny things. I came across a, uh, uh, a definition of this uh, over on Anime Planet. Uh, <laughs> how, how's this for, for big? Um, a harem includes three or more characters who potentially show romantic interest in a male protagonist. The sex, gender, or orientation of the harem members is irrelevant as long as they exclusively, or at least primarily, are vying for the affections of the same individual who may or may not reciprocate towards one, several, or none of these romantic rivals. And by the way, it's not necessarily a male protagonist. It's a female protagonist, often too. So, um, yeah, harem anime is about one guy trying to buy a bunch of girls who particularly like him, or a guy trying to buy guys, whatever, right? Um, and that is sort of a subgenre with an anime. However, this gets even more complicated. Going over to the Wikipedia uh, uh, entry, uh, which gets weirdly into um, uh, sociosexuality and uh, gender binaries and just mm, um, um, so and, you know, polyamory and polygamy. It's weird. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the interesting thing they, they point out is that uh, romance is rarely the main focus of an entire anime series. Um, which makes the harem structure ambiguous. So, um, uh, and they say it's the, the most distinguishable trait is the group of polyamorous females and or males who accompany the protagonist, in some instances cohabitating, um, and uh, intimacy is just about customary. Not sure what, that, what they're trying to go there, um, but it is never necessary. Same idea, but that's an interesting point, is that it's fairly uncommon for an anime series to be a romance series, period. There's almost always something else going on. Um, and it's why calling something like a harem show is a bit inaccurate, because there's, there's often like some sci-fi or some action or whatever that's kind of informing the whole story. Often it's, often it's more of a comedy than it is a romance series, if it's a harem series. So that is one of the complicated things there. Um, so let's talk about some harem anime and going to my anime list and pulling up the most popular harem anime um, uh, as defined by the the, the, anim the anime tagged harem for whom the most my anime list members have you know um, favorited that or liked that show right so it's it's just Mao um, and let's look at some of these top ones and, and think about that the very top one is actually High School Double D, which saddens me somewhat, um, which is a very fan service -y show. It, it is a, a, an almost outright sexual show. Um, in fact, I would say it is sort of outright sexual um, uh, because it is about a character who is very pervy and other pervy characters around him. So that is actually an interesting point, is that it, you know the most popular harem series on Mal, at least, is very much a a show about physical attraction. The second one is Iran High School Host Club. And that is a, a primarily a comedy, uh, sort of a, a dramedy, if you will. Uh, and it's a reverse harem, girls trying to buy guys. Importantly, it is about a lot of different things. You know, Iran is one of the shows that manages to hit on lots of different um, genres at once. It is definitely a multi-genre show. And it's a good example of how the harem concept can be flavoring or spice, or really a structure for a show, as opposed to its genre. Then followed by Nisekoi, which is a, as I understand it, um, a, a light, happy show, right? Followed by Zero no Tsukaima, the familiar of Zero, which is a magical action series, actually magical action franchise. This is focusing on the, the first series that is very much about this uh, will they, won't they between the two main characters. And it's less of a, it's 
It's a good example of a harem series where there is a main girl and a main guy, and they are going to, you know, it is about the two of them. There are other guys and girls around, but you know that there's nothing serious ever going to happen with those characters. It's, it's about these two people um, and when they're going to end up together. Uh, that's one of the interesting sort of uh, tropes of the genre that was introduced, I think, with Love Hina, most popularly. Or the, at least Love Hina, I think, popularized the idea that, yes, it's a harem series, but there's clearly a main girl and a main guy, right? Um, and so then digging into other things like Date A Live, uh, Is This a Zombie, uh, Rosario and Vampire, other things, School Days. Um, so lots of different genres and concepts, Infinite Stratos, uh, which is a mecha series with this harem concept. So they're all in there. It's, it's all possible, right? And um, I think it's one of the reasons why harem is so popular, why harem shows up so much, because you can have sci-fi harem, fantasy harem, anything can have a harem in it. And what that does is it adds A, romantic tension, B, sexual tension, potentially, and C, Lots of cute girl characters or handsome guy characters um, that you can brand around and do, you know, plushies of and all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't really get in the way of a lot of the story concepts out there. Now, if you're doing a gritty, serious detective story, you're probably not going to add a harem concept onto there. But for a lot of things, and especially a lot of anime stories where it tends to be you know pop light adventure kind of stories i think harem works very well um so let's let's look into the the that, that genre a little bit more and i'm having a tough time using the word genre because it's not really a it's kind of a genre maybe um and as kamenoko in the chat room points out tenchi moyo is the considered the first harem anime series it really codified and popularized the, the, the trope and the concept. It was actually born out of a sort of a discussion between some anime folks about Bubblegum Crisis back in the 80s, and uh, which is about a bunch of uh, pretty girls who put on powered armor and fight rogue androids. Uh, and one of their numbers is a teenage boy. And they were all, these, these folks were all sitting around chatting about Bubblegum Crisis and saying, what would, be, what would it be like if they all went to a hot spring? And the, uh, the boy, you know, the teenage boy is, uh, uh, you know, sitting around um, and, you know, maybe trying to peep on the girls in, the, in there. And what if he had a, in a story with, which focused on him, on Maki, and being surrounded by all these, you know, pretty girls? Wouldn't that be, you know, who wouldn't want to be surrounded by, by pretty girls? And that kind of evolved into this idea of, oh, we'll do a story about a guy surrounded by cute girls, which became Tenchi Moyo. Now, Tenchi Moyo is interesting because that was way before the trope, and um, I agree, Matt, I think uh, uh, trope works better as a term. Hey, Spin to Win, been on for about an hour. Um, so the thing is, uh, with Tenchi, is that Tenchi is surrounded by pretty girls who are all very much in their own plots. They all have very much their own stuff going on. Two of them in particular are very very much attracted to him uh one physically the other more romantically and uh the others are just kind of around and like him in various ways more as kind of a brother or a friend and so one of the nice things is you know they're not all sitting around dependent on there they're not all sitting around waiting for him to marry them right um in tenchi tenchi is just kind of um surrounded by all these these girls with with plot happening. And it's one of the, the nice things about Tenchi is that you get strong female characters in there in the broad sense of the word strong. And um, there can be a lot of plot. There can be a lot of things happening. It is more of a science fantasy action story um, or at least adventure story than a lot of your typical harem series which are, again, you know, modern characters just kind of having sort of comedic stuff, which is, which is uh, kind of nice. And then that kind of evolved and El Hazar did... Uh, copy that pattern and it became a big thing um <clears throat> then you get the um, twists like you got in please twins and please teacher as hem hokey uh, brought up where please teacher introduced the idea of a character who is secretly married and has to keep it secret 
um, from his like classmates, uh, and and this idea of a kind of a clandestine harem concept where there are these other girls who may be interested in him, but he can't be he can't reciprocate because he actually has a secret marriage, and then please twins I think was actually quite innovative for the time because please twins introduced the idea that the main character um, was uh, used to play with a neighborhood girl when they were like really really young and he has this photo of the two of them together uh, when they were you know like three years old and then two girls show up at his house both claiming to be that girl um, and they each have a copy of that photograph so the question is which one of these is the real girl and it's very kind of interesting to to kind of delve into that because then it turns into this isn't harem in the sense of which girl will I choose? It is I have kind of chosen one of these girls in my mind, but there's a bigger plot thing going on here about who actually is whom, um, and of where he is essentially testing the girls in a real way. He's trying to figure out who is this girl, right? Um, Actually, uh, and because the, the, please, twins. One of them is his uh, sister, and one of them is the uh, the um, neighborhood girl. But they're not sure which one's which. So yeah, it's complicated. Um, so that's that's kind of this this interesting twist now, where you have stories um, where the characters are, like investigating these various girls. You got, and you got stuff like Saber, Saber Marionette, Saber Marionette J and R and the other Saber Marionette shows, which kind of dialed harem up to 11. It is set in a world where there are no women anymore biologically, so men um, have constructed all these android girls to kind of fill that, that gap, uh, which leads to girls in this kind of weird societal position, all these android girls. And you know, delves into some of those things where and um, and I, I've seen very little Saber Marionette, but one of the um, I, from what I've heard of the staff, they were like, yeah, we we were kind of making fun of the fact that obviously harem is this wish fulfillment fantasy for boys. Let's imagine what that entire society would look like. Like, like let's really think about it. that's not necessarily healthy, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's very harem, but it's kind of meta harem in a, in a, in a weird way. And that was 90s. I mean, that was very early into, into the genre. And then it gets more complicated from there because in the 2000s, you got all of the visual novel adaptations, all the romance novel adaptations, um, sorry, rom romance visual novel adaptations. And those were almost all dating sims, which were almost all harems in one way or another. Uh, visual novels, at least any of their dating sims, are pretty much straight up harems, um, and so that just flooded the market with harem or harem-like shows, which kind of diluted the idea. Where I think up till that point, harem was this fun sort of comedy element that you threw into a show, and now oh, you have romance that is like that, right? Um, and then, yeah, like, like you said, the Quidditch, you've got this, this, this thing now, and I think it's been around for a while, but we're seeing it more, more obviously now, if you think Sword Art Online, the sort of semi-harem concept, where there are a few girls around who are interested in the main character, and they blush, and, and they, they flirt a little bit, but there is a clear main girlfriend for him. Uh, and I think, again, that kind of goes back to the Love Hina structure. Um... But it's kind of that whole weird, uh, that weird thing. So again, I think that that's one of the reasons why harem is so popular and why it is around so much because there is a lot of um, uh, a lot of room for shifting around that that concept, right? For playing with the harem formula. Where it can be very light. It can be just, oh, there are a couple of cute girls here that the main character may or may not be interested in, and they're kind of interested in him. Or you can go much stronger with, like, White Album, um, uh, Amigami SS, right? Um, Love Plus, right? Which is a video game, but still. Um, and, yeah, so it's it's kind of kind of complicated. Um, yeah, um, Anonatsu Dimiteru, I think, is the... The third, please teacher, please twins, 
show, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, or at least it's it's spiritually in that in that world. So yeah, you you can do a lot, I think, with harem. And it's one of the, the complicated things is that I think a lot of people hear harem, they hear the concept, and especially like that word is is a little troublesome. But they hear harem or they hear, oh, it's you know, a guy surrounded by cute girls who who like him. And they imagine it's this sort of weird sexual fantasy thing. Um, you know, maybe the girls are all you know, wearing you know, diaphanous silks or something. Um, and folks kind of shy away from it a little bit and think it's kind of creepy. When you, actually, if you dig into it, it's really just a, a spice a lot of times. It's, it's just a, an element of that concept. Uh, and then, yeah, you got stuff like there, there are mecha series, which are basically harem series. Uh, in fact, one of the most popular... Uh, harem series on these lists is um, uh, ah, sorry um, Iskai no Tsukishi Monogatari is the Japanese title but I'm thinking of the American title because we are not Japanese um, but of course um, Mal doesn't like that uh, War on Geminar, there we go Tenchi spinoff um, uh, anime series still in canon and that's a um, fantasy mecha series, straight up, uh, where the main character is surrounded by, by girls who definitely want him, and where there's actually a an in world thing about how men are like very valuable as breeding stock for pilots, essentially. Where you know, you you need where, you know, uh, being able to pilot a mecha is essentially a genetic trait. And so you know, uh, th this boy shows up, and he's like, oh, he's very powerful. You know, uh, suddenly a lot of girls, you know, would have would find it very advantageous socially if they had a child with somebody who is, you know, that powerful of a pilot. And then I don't think it's a spoiler to say that the show then delves into that a little bit. That that is that is a troublesome space to be in as a society, where you know one gender or another is kind of treated as breeding stock. Um, and it's not that like they're locked away or anything. It's just that you know that is you have these very clear societal expectations of what you're supposed to do, and that is very limiting, and that can be a real, real problem. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> do, 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 do Yeah, exactly. Derp is that there's a lot of uh, you know people think it's sexualized, and it, it it sometimes is, it often is, but it's not necessarily sexualized. It's also complicated by, the, by just the nature of fan service in anime, where people see, you know, a girl prancing around in a bikini and doing the Gynax bounce, uh, and don't recognize that that is treated much more lightly in Japan. That is kind of a goofy thing that you throw in there. And yes, it is sexualizing this female character, um, but it's, you know, um, it, it is not quite meant in the upright titillating way that 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 kind of stuff is in uh, in america generally speaking um and again you also that that issue that it's not necessarily that everyone is just kind of kind of can't wait to get the guy in bed right it can be just this liking people right um so spin to win, that, that is a, a fair point. One of the complexities here is that harem shows are popular. And it's one of the ones, things I wanted to get into here is that, you know, you absolutely have this story. You have, absolutely have this as a, it, it's a spice, but it is a very popular spice. And it gets a little old after a while, where that is just kind of a thing in every single show. Um, Fisher asks, is Macross harem? There's Misa and Minwe, Minwe and that is. I know you need three females at least for a harem series to work. Yeah, I'd argue it's it's probably not technically a harem series because it's really just about you know, a guy choosing between two girls. I think the the basic concepts are kind of there, right? It's 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 in a similar territory, but I think it doesn't quite cross the line over into into harem. Um, and Laquitas, that's an interesting point that not a lot of anime get actually like licensed and released like on dvd over here in america i think you know they're all got on crunchy roll but in terms of like big releases over here i think harem ends up being and i think it's because of that thing where it is 
especially when it's a harem series, it's it's a more strong. It it is a harem series more than it is other things. You know, when when the harem is central to it, I think it just kind of makes it something that probably is not going to find a massive audience. So you can just kind of leave it over, you know, over there. Um, you kind of leave it as okay, it's streaming, whatever. That's fine. Um, it's certainly on TV. You do not get those things on TV. But then again, a lot of anime concepts just don't go on a TV because they just don't, you know, they're not flashy, they're not exciting, um, uh, you know, a little too serious, a little whatever. So I think that's the complicated thing is, is that. Um, I mean, my Hime, yeah, and then plenty of verse harems out there, yep. Um, you know, girls surrounded by cute boys or on High School Host Club, right? Um, you know, What's interesting is that I think then you've got shows like Free, which is kind of like a, a reverse harem without a protagonist, right? Which is all about attractive boys hanging out, and that's that's an interesting sort of twist on the whole concept. And I think that's one of the reasons why they did Free is that they said let's do a harem series without the actual central character. And I think that that showed it is, that is a, a very you know successful, effective way of doing that. Again, it's not that's not really a harem series, um, right? Yeah, I see what you're saying, Liquidus. Is that definitely those 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 harem series do not break into the mainstream over here? Uh, and again, I think it's because most of the anime that we get here on TV is action or kids, right, or both. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you're absolutely right, the creator through F315, welcome, um, who's going through the visual novel adaptations of the mid-2000s, and it, it, it is a hard time getting those right. It is very, very difficult to adapt a branching storyline to a linear medium, right? It's just, there's a lot there, and you're never going to please all the fans. It's just really, really complicated. Uh, would you say that harems are more abundant than reverse harems? Absolutely, there's no question. Uh, you look at the numbers, you look at the amount out there, there are absolutely more, you know, um, boys surrounded by girls harem anime than girls surrounded by boys. Um, boys love is different, right? Now we're talking about harem, not just cute boy shows. Um, so Restaurant Paradiso is not harem. Um, but yeah, there, there's a huge amount there. Um, canon, yep. I, from what I've seen of canon, the anime did a very good job. Um, yeah, Air and Clannad, I think, did a very good job from what I've heard. But it's just, it's really hard because, again, you know, just, how do you structure things? Uh, how do you make this work? And how do you, how do you take characters that just existed in this, um, <coughs> in this more imaginative medium, right, and bring them in? One of the, I think one of the problems with visual novel adaptations, particularly, is that it is so close to animation. You know, with a with a novel or a manga, or whatever, your your imagination is filling in gaps, and so the anime is never going to be exactly like that. Uh, and so, you know, the mind can accept that. Okay, here are the colors they're using. Here's the the camera angles they're using. Um, with a visual novel, it's so close. Um, it's so so, you know, almost an anime series. That I think it's a lot harder to to go there. Guys, I have got so much anime on my to-watch list. <laughs> I appreciate the recommendations. You know, feel free to recommend things, but just just be aware. Um, right. So uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot there. It's it's, it's very harem is is. <sighs> yeah, and I, th I think it's interesting that that point that I think vi the visual novel adaptations really. I think that kind of sour people on harem. I think it's one of the reasons why folks are, t are tired of harem now, because visual novels just flooded the medium with it. And you, you, you get this problem where um, folks are just exhausted. But what do you do, right? They, they are clearly successful. Now, I think one of the, one of the, 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 the different takes you can have is kind of like for your um, Idol Master and Love Live and those things, I think are also kind of similar. And then again, there, there's no protagonist around them, but it's a bunch of cute girls, a bunch of cute guys, and you can just kind of imagine being it, being their boyfriend slash girlfriend. 
And that's, I think, really, um, that, that might be where this ends up getting taken in the sense that there will always be harem. But I think that is where folks are kind of latching on and saying, okay, what if we did this? What if we went in that direction? Right. K-On, I think, also similarly, is a harem series without the protagonist, in a way. Not intentionally, necessarily, but it's a way of saying, oh, here are a bunch of, of girls hanging out. And I, I can imagine them being, you know, I can imagine hanging out with them. I can imagine dating one of them in one way or another. Um... So yeah, I think harem, harem, uh, harem's an interesting thing. So getting back to that question of if you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to get into harem, where might you start? And that's a complicated question. Um, let me see here. I want to pull up this, uh, this list here real quick. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So a few harem that definitely get recommended a lot. And again, here's where we get into complicated territory. I guess some of these things are, yeah, kind of harem technically, sort of in a way, but not really. Um, and um, I'm going to have to limit myself to, to things I've actually watched, right? That's always difficult. Um, yeah, because that's, that's not, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of weirdness in here. So um, some that I... I um, I think, and again, I would say Tenchi Moyo is a, is a good place to start. It's because it hits so many different notes. You get sci-fi, fantasy action. You get a little romance. You get a lot of comedy. You get some dramatic moments. I think it's a good place to start. Plus, you have the OV, original OVA, which is only six episodes long. Uh, so you can kind of get a, a really good feel for that in there. Um, that's where you can, you can start there. Um, other than that, I think... I think um, if you want over the top ridiculous comedy in your harem, I would recommend trying Love Hina. It is very much a product of, it, of its time. It is, it has that comedy trope where the main character is constantly stumbling across the main characters, the, the, the girl character is naked, and then they punch him violently. You know, they react violently to this, even though it's obviously accidental. And it's just kind of a running gag throughout the entire series. So some folks just really find that difficult. Other folks just love it. So just be aware of that. Toradora. So I've not seen Toradora, but I've heard very good things about Toradora. Being a much more of a romance, a romantic comedy, right? But, but more of a, uh, uh, more focusing on that relationship between the two of them. But again, I think Toradora is one of those shows where it's, you know, it is clear that you have these two main characters, essentially. Um, but yeah, that's a... That's one to, uh, to focus on, to, to, to try and check out. Uh, let me scroll back thing through here. Uh, do, 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 do. I know there were one or two here that I was like, oh yeah, that's a good um, good place to start. Clannad. Um, do, 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 do. What do you guys think of To Love Rue? Because I've not seen, I've, I've seen like, clips and like an, a first episode of one of the to love Rue shows but it just never really did anything for me um so i don't know but to love Rue seems to be high on the list I, again there's a thought let's see here um yeah but I, i'd start there i'd start with tenchi love hina and then some of the more modern stuff and just try a few things. Uh, so to, to answer Smug Pickle's question, are there any mech anime with harem elements or vice versa? Absolutely. Um, and I would agree that Evangelion is a bit of a stretch. It's not really about, you know, I mean, I, 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 Evangelion is actually kind of parodying harem in a sense, where it is about a... a a boy who's constantly pushing away all of these girls. Uh, so I think it is it, it is kind of parodying a uh, harem. Ooh, Oh My Goddess. Um, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah. I would say if you want to try harem, something that's, that's a little more... Um, what I love about Oh My Goddess is how sweet the relationship is in Oh My Goddess. These two characters obviously love each other. And then they're being fought over by other characters. But there's a very strong core to their relationship 
and it is there from the beginning. Uh, you know, it doesn't, oh, well, I kind of grew to like him over time. No, they're, they're very close. And I think that, that really works very well in Oh My Goddess, or Oh My Goddess. Okay, so heavy sexualization of the female characters. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I've not seen Seki Rei. So, back to the question about mecha anime with, with uh, harem elements. Yes, as I said, Infinite Stratos, War on Geminar. Um, so, War on Geminar is technically not the only Tetsu series that's mecha because Dual Parallel Trouble Adventure is a spin-off series that is part of the Tenchi universe. Uh, or the Tenchi multiverse, really, in a, in a way. Um, so yeah, Dual Parallel Trouble Adventure is also technically Tenchi, and it is definitely a harem anime. Um, much more harem, actually, than, uh, say, Evangelion. Uh, and then Razafon, I think, has some harem elements to it. Very, very lightly. Um, Godin or... I wouldn't say Full Metal Panic. I, I don't I don't see harem in Full Metal Panic. Aquarian Evolve goes in its own category. Right? It, go, it goes off in its own way, its own, its own place. Um, it is a, that is a whole weird thing. I, I mean, you, you want to get weird, you get shows like say, um, Yurikuma Arashi, Lesbian Bear Storm, which is sort of this. All well, it's a, it's pretty much all Yuri, harem, but it's all these characters all interacting, you know, all going in and out of each other's sort of harem spheres. But I think you you could qualify Yuri Kuma Arashi as uh, as harem. Um, the weird thing about this that show is there's just there is, there are naked girls all over the opening credits of that 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 show and pretty sexualized imagery of those girls um and then the show has almost none of that uh, one or two sequences but it's just it's not that weirdly enough so yeah that's i think a pretty good sort of overview of harem and what it is and where it can go so uh as always uh thank you all very much for uh, for being involved in this, for this great debate. We'll be back uh, actually in two weeks with more great debate. And we will see you then.